you, Speaker. It's uh, wonderful to rise in the chamber this afternoon to speak on this matter of public importance. And I do so uh, acknowledging the presence in the uh, gallery this afternoon of some young people, some young students. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what school you're from or uh, what electorate you're from, uh, but you're very welcome amongst us because what we're doing today is we're talking about early childhood education and we're talking about the importance of education uh, within the state of Victoria. And uh, you young people, uh, through you, Speaker, who are gathered in this chamber today, uh, are at the heart of what we're talking about. So through you, Speaker, you're very welcome amongst us. Uh, as I said in my maiden speech in this place in December last year, uh, young people in Victoria, Speaker, are not just the leaders of the future, uh, but they are le leaders that we need today. Uh, so my message through you, Speaker, to every one of those young students gathered in the chamber today is to say to you, uh, for all those times that you have been referred to as the leaders of the future, please ignore that. Uh, your politicians need you to be the young leaders of our community today. So that's our challenge to you, and thank you so much for visiting the Parliament of Victoria. Uh, Speaker, on this uh, matter of public importance, uh, on this matter of public importance, uh, I, I wanted to uh, firstly uh, acknowledge a personal interest in this particular matter. Uh, speaker, I am the father of a 20-month-old daughter, Abigail. Uh, and so the matter that we're discussing today, this matter of public importance that refers to early childhood education is of significant importance to me, uh, because for my wife and I, uh, it is a matter that is important to us. Uh, and it's clear, and many uh, people have said this, uh, much research is around this, that the importance of the early years is now well known throughout Australia, Speaker, uh, and the rest of the world. Uh, these years are a time when the brain develops and much of its wiring is laid down. The experiences and relationships uh, as, child, as a child has, plus the nutrition and health, can actually affect uh, this enormously. And positive experiences help the brain to develop in healthy ways. Uh, speaker, I had the great pleasure of attending recently on behalf of uh, the Shadow Minister for Education, uh, the ELLA Conference, the Early Learning Association Australia uh, Conference. Now ELLA, for those in the chamber who don't know, are the peak body uh, which works in partnership with early, early learning providers and parents to deliver excellence in provide, for providers and parents uh, for uh, early learning uh, for every child. Uh, they have a diverse membership of uh, 1,100 or so service providers, including uh, early years management organisation, uh, organisations, uh, kindergartens, local governments, uh, daycare services, government independent schools and out-of-school hours care programs. Uh, and it was a fascinating conference. I was there with the Minister for Education and, and his parliamentary secretary. Uh, and in part of my research for this uh, MPI speaker, I went through some of their uh, budget uh, submissions. And for the last three years, uh, Ella has submitted uh, in their budget submission uh, a number of items that they think are critically important. And one of those critically important things is, in their view, a skilled, supported and valued workforce. And they say, and I quote, they would like to improve attraction, recruitment and retention of high quality staff in a rapidly growing sector that is of increasing strategic importance to government families and the community. They go on and they say that they would like to develop and implement a workforce strategy, uh, plan the growth of the teacher and educator workforce over the next decade, value and support educational leadership and build a capacity for instructional support, uh, fund early years management services to mentor provisionally registered teachers to support them to become fully registered to fund professional development, ensuring a cost-effective focus on quality improvements and capability developments, to measure implementation and use interactive and creative problem solving to better attract and retain staff. Uh, so they asked for that in their 2019-20 budget submission. Uh, in their 2018-19 budget submission, they asked for the same thing, Speaker. They asked for uh, central to the quality provision of early childhood education is a skilled, supported and valued workforce. A multi-pronged workforce development strategy would sustainably raise standards and enhance the sector's professional culture to develop, to deliver improved educational outcomes for children. Uh, and again, in 2017, in their budget submission uh, to this government, they asked for exactly the same thing, a highly skilled collaborative workforce. They say here, Alice says here, and I quote in their budget submission, that the quality of the early learning workforce is pivotal 
to the richness of the learning experiences of children and their long-term outcomes. Supporting practitioners to grow and develop professionally will enable children's needs to be met and better position the sector to meet future demands. Uh, now, Speaker, I could go on and quote other ELLA documents where they ask for the development of a workforce strategy. Um, I won't, uh, because the point that I simply wish to make uh, is that uh, the government may have delivered outcomes in this budget for this sector. However, uh, they have not delivered upon the foundation for the expansion of this particular workforce, and that is the development of a workforce strategy. This is the peak body who is asking them to develop this workforce strategy so that the people who are charged with the education of young people are best skilled and best placed to educate young people. And that, Speaker, has simply not been delivered upon. Now, in the government's announcements, uh, kindergarten for all three-year-old children, uh, they identify, uh, and I'm referring here, Speaker, to the uh, education.vic.gov.au website, a rollout schedule. Uh, they say that in 2020, uh, three-year-olds in six council areas will be able to access up to 15 hours of kindergartens. Uh, now, in the time that I've had to prepare for this MPI contribution, Speaker, uh, I've done a bit of research. I've done a bit of research uh, on these six uh, local government areas. Uh, Bully Oak, Hind Marsh, North Grampian, South Gippsland, Strathbogie, uh, uh, and Yarri Ambiak as well. Uh, and and I, went, uh, I went to the most recent uh, census data uh, available in 2016 and I did some fairly basic research and I pulled up uh, how many three-year-olds actually exist uh, within these local government areas uh, when the latest census data, authoritative data, was available. And I came up with a number uh, of 705. So across these six LGAs where this program will be rolled out, there are in fact 705 uh, uh, th uh, three-year-olds uh, living within these uh, LGA areas. Uh, now I then did a little bit further research, Speaker, and I uh, went to how many three-year-olds there are in the state of Victoria. A and I pulled up the figure, uh, courtesy of the ABS and the 2016 census data, and the total number of three-year-olds in Victoria is 76,016, Speaker. Wow. So if you would believe, Speaker, the government's posturing on this particular announcement, if you would believe it, uh, you would think that three-year-old kinder is being rolled out across the state tomorrow. But no, the reality, Speaker, is quite different. The reality is quite different. It's being rolled out in six local government areas, uh, six local government areas, uh, totalling 705 uh, three-year-olds of 76,016 three-year-olds in the state of Victoria. Uh, it, it's OK, uh, Member for Morty Alec, I'll do the maths for you. No need for a calculator, my friend. 0.93% uh, of, of the three-year-old population of Victoria. That's where it's being rolled out to. Less than 1% of the three-year-old population of Victoria is where this government's popular, uh, uh, policy is being rolled out to in the first place. And if you believe the government's posturing on this particular matter, you'd think uh, that it was being rolled out statewide uh, tomorrow. Uh, speaker, in the 90 seconds that I have left, and I, I really don't like the clock because I'm just getting warmed up, I did uh, a little bit of additional uh, research. And uh, I, I did a 10-year comparison, Speaker, and the 10-year comparison uh, looked at the amount of funding uh, that has been placed uh, for Victorian schools uh, both now and 10 years ago. And the, the research that I found, and I commend the Parliamentary Library for, assist, for their assistance in this research as well, uh, indicated to me that there's been a 200% increase in output initiatives uh, in the Victorian budget uh, for uh, the education sector uh, in the last 10 years. But then you compare that, Speaker, uh, to the outcomes that have been achieved in that time. Uh, in reading, uh, Year 9 ha has dropped from 94.7% to 94.1%. Uh, in Year 7, reading has dropped from 95.8% to 95.1%. Uh, in numeracy, Year 7 has dropped from 96.5% to 95.9%. In Year 3, uh, numeracy has dropped from 96.5% to 96.3%. Uh, so for at least the last decade, at best, standards and outcomes in our schools have flatlined, whereas the 
uh, the funding infrastructure uh, has increased by 200 per cent. This is, uh, just simply does not add up, and Victoria's children deserve Order. better. Member for Morty Alec. 